Okay, we're gonna wrap a few fingers. Show um, how we'd like to do it. I use really thin um, sections, nice and long and thin. I'm using um, like a Fair Bear, one of our skin tones. And then I usually go around the hand just to get it anchored somewhere. And then I start working down a finger. Before I get to the end, I put a little bit of wax on it, on the wire. Oh, sorry. And Not then anything. I like to press the wool into the wax and that helps hold it on the tip and you, if you get it wrapped tightly, you hardly even have to needle felt it. I'm going to go back down and when I get to the bottom, I'll go around the hand. I usually do one finger at a time. Sometimes you can get a nice enough long piece that you can do two, but I'd rather just do one at a time and have the right amount of wool. So I'll show another one. And it's not, if you use a thin amount of wool, keep it smooth and tight. Get your wax on there and then press the wool into the wax and then when you get to the tip kind of angle the wool back the other way shouldn't be it's not fun but it, it should come out okay not going to go as far as to say that it's fun to finish out the hand and make it look kind of more hand shaped, after you get the fingers wrapped, take a piece and you can go around the thumb to get this kind of thumb pad. Wait, I better make sure I know which one's the thumb. This is my thumb. So I'm going to go around the hand and then I'm going to go around that base of the thumb and then I'm going to go around the palm to further shape that. Now I'm going the wrong way. You know, that palm of the hand, distinguish the fingers from the thumb. And then it's mostly on the hand that I do some felting, not so much on the fingers. But that last piece around everything kind of neatens the hand up, I think. I think so too. Yeah. yeah, and it helps you cover that knuckle area where you might not have gotten very much wool. So do both hands and then we'll move on. So we're just finishing up and um, if you intend for more of the arms to show than clothing, then make sure you wrap your um, wrist area. area. Yeah, with the skin tone that you're using. Right. What's next, Lee? Next, I think we should start on the face because sometimes doing the face first helps you decide how they would like to be clothed. Okay. So I will start with the face with my flesh tone that I've chosen and I'm going to. This is the way I do it. I'm sure Sarah does it differently, but I'm going to do it and delineate. You lay it flat. Yes. I'm Thank sorry. you. Right. You're okay. Yes. Okay. We are going to make, going to make a little piece that's going to delineate where the eyes, pretty much where the middle of the face is. So I'm going to take a kind of a one inch with, without the fluff, one inch piece, fairly thin. I'm going to draw a line across the middle. Is my guy in your way? Sorry. He's good. I'm going to make a, fold it over, just make a simple taco shape with fringe on the top and a finished edge on the bottom. does not need to be well needled, but you can also, if you want to, punch it a little bit. I'm going to do mine similar, except I'm doing two rolls just to get a little more thickness in there. Okay. And But still leave 
leaving some fringe to go over the top. Right, of right. Yeah. I often add rolls later. So between the chin and the top of the head, the eyes are going to be halfway through. Often I make mistakes of putting the eyes up high, and then by the time I finish building everything up, I have no forehead. Yeah, that happens all the, all time. the time. Happens yeah. to me all yeah. the time. So, so halfway, somewhere about right there. So I'm gonna lay the finished edge across the halfway point and needle it across. It's interesting how our brains want to put the eyes at the top of the head. Yes. <laughs> So now I'm going to just tack down the fringe. It doesn't need to be perfect. Just tack it down. And I've left this purposely a little bit loose because we want to be able to shape it later. Okay. Uh, next up is the nose. Yeah, we did the nose. Yeah. Next. Do you want to do a nose and then I'll do a nose? Sure. What kind of nose are you going to do? Um, I think I'm going to do a vertical button nose with nostrils. Okay. So this is kind of a button nose. Yes. More nose just on the tip in a nice round little button way. And then this guy has a longer nose. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make these shapes on a toothpick and the long nose you're going to put vertically, which will show. Right. There's also the hooked nose. And then this guy has yeah. a hooked nose which um, I think I did on the on the round end of the Zuli tool. I made a a little pillow on that and pulled it off and then felted it into this hook right. shape. So lots of options. It's fun to have a picture to, to think about what you want to do as you're doing it. So I'm going to use my flesh tone and a skewer, I mean a toothpick. And I like to just start with a nice firm shape and then that no matter what nose I decide to make, at least it's going to be the bridge of the nose. And I got way too much wool. While she's wrapping that, here's another nose, which is sort of what I'm going to be doing, where I make a vertical button nose, but I didn't fold it in half like the typical button, and then I put tiny tacos on either side of the nose for nostrils. So you want to put the bridge of the nose up, right up to where that eyebrow piece is that we put. And then the tip down. Now I think I'm going to do a second piece to make a little bit more of a button nose on him. Rather than it, this just being the nose. Yep. And I'm going to fold that softly, a little more softly than the toothpick wrap. The toothpick wrap is is really firm, you know, because it yeah it gets it, really tight right. and and I want this end to be the bulbous end of the nose, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack it down so it doesn't unravel when I get it off the toothpick. And at first your nose is gonna look kind of huge because <laughs> there's nothing else on the face yet. There's no cheeks or chin, so it's going to look, um, it's going to look big, no matter what. So I just put a softly folded button over the end of that. And I usually try to tuck this end in and under a bit, which gives it that little upturned look instead of just letting the end of the seed shape continue down because nose is kind of a broccoli end. Mm -hmm. While you work on that I'm gonna I'm gonna show a cheek. Mm -hmm. you okay. A cheek. okay. This is good enough for now. I'm gonna do two cheeks and I'm just gonna wrap them at the same time on the Zuli tool. So I try to pull about the same amount of wool and then all I'm going to do is wrap the round end to make a pillow. And while it's on the tool, I can try to make them look the same in terms of size. 
Now this nose is going to get some nostrils, but I want to wait until I have more mm -hmm. covering mm -hmm. with the cheek and the mouth before I add those. So they I want to disappear. Yeah. I want to do nostrils too. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, after we get a little more face on there. All right. May I use the Zuli when you're done? Yeah, there's thank you. There's I'll go find them over there. Yeah. <laughs> I get you. Nice. And I can slide these off. Thank you. And they're real soft. They have that give to them. So I can further shape it into kind of anything on the face. He's gonna be I'm aiming for um I'm not going to do a super, super round Santa, but I'm getting some on the side of the face and some cheekbone here. And I like to let it go up and meet the nose on each side because that's what our cheeks do. Mine are going to be happy cheeks. I think I need to pull my pillow just a bit so that it's a little bit thinner up here by the uh, face, by the nose. I try to define where that eye is going to be because you know your cheeks are underneath your eye and my cheeks are going to come around. We can't, Almost we can't see your work. I, if you need to lean over, lean over. But. No, 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 we're good. funny. So even though he's going to get a beard, a full beard, I want to make sure that the face shape is correct so that when I put the beard on, even though it's covering everything, right. it's going to look correct. Exactly. So next I want to get, he doesn't have much of a chin here. Now that's a different look. He could, he could be a, he could be an old guy with an underbite and, or an overbite or no and, not, and not have a chin, but I want this guy to have, um, a jaw and a you know a good jawline and chin. So I'm actually going to make the same cheek shape that I did on the Zuli tool, except I'm going to fold it into a chin. Good. So if you wanted a real prominent, you know, little chin, you could do it on the toothpick. Um, but I like for this, I want to be able to shape it in place a little bit. Yeah. And this, your chin, is going to be, don't worry about lines between your cheeks and your chin because we're going to cover it all with the fringe that we make with the upper and the lower lips. Yeah, yeah. I need, I'm going to use this, the end of this skewer here for my chin. Look at your piece from oh, different I was angles. I going to say that. Yeah. So that you're, you know, you're sure that it's not just always working from the front. Another thing that I find that ends up happening typically in faces and on animals too, is not having enough flesh off to the sides of the eyes. Like almost the eyes go right out to the side of the head, which they shouldn't do. Definitely. So you may need to add some wool on the sides here. So and I'll show you what I was exactly going to do. I have a little piece that I'm going to put there. And I'll show you. I'm going to make two tiny little triangles with just some tiny fluff here. I'm going to go ahead and make a line down the middle, fold over the top, and then do a little fold down the middle line and I'm making two triangular pillows. There's one. And I just need the shape. I don't need it to be perfect right now. And that triangular pillow is going to go right in here. It's also going to give him some little laugh lines and it's going to make that face a little wider where it needs to be. Moving a little bit more to the left, Lee. Okie dokie. No matter what you're making, um, it's kind of this combination of deciding is this going to be a finished 
you know, finished edge as is, how much more stabbing is it going to get? Does it need um, some fringe so that it blends? So there's so many shapes that you can make, but those are some of the things that you want to think about right. as you're making them. So I just did similar to what Lee did, um, but I left, I made mine a little softer and um, just kind of felted them into place. I didn't do any felting beforehand. beforehand. Yeah. I'm going to make two little brows on the toothpick. Whoa, wax, or we're going up to um, brows. Um, no, we could do, we can do, um, we can do lips. That matter. Sometimes doing the lips is fun now because then you have more of an expression and then you can decide yep. if you want big brows, little brows, yep. laugh lines, not laugh lines. So, looks pretty scary right now. Alright. What do you do first, top lip or bottom lip? Um, I do the top lip first. Okay. And I kind of want. Mine looks like Mr. Magoo. <laughs> he does. <laughs> you do want some poofiness um, and <clears throat> broadness and thickness to that upper lip because otherwise it's going to be all <laughs> caved in like someone with no teeth. So. Um, Again, I make mine just the taco way. And I make it wider than the space where it, then where it's going to go. I can't. Your head is in the way. So, there we go. My head. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. So I'm going to make this length wider than the space here so that I can poof it and pooch it okay. up to give it an arch rather than have it flat like a toothless person. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you're going for toothless person. Exactly. If you're right. going for toothless person, then go for it. And I do like to make it fairly firm because once I fold it and put it in place, I don't want to be needling on it to flatten right. it. Right, right. I'm going to put a piece across inside my taco to give it more of a definitive edge. Uh-huh. You can do that. If you have to, once you've got the lip on, you can tuck a piece of core, the same flesh tone, up under it to make sure that poof stays Oh, yeah. There. I'm going to roll that and put that yeah. in place. Okay, while well, she's finishing that, let's find a piece of dark. It's a good time to put a dark color, a brown or a black, in this empty space. Sarah and I have been talking a lot about empty spaces this week and how amazingly awesome they are. Yes. Because you can fill them with whatever you want. So I'm going to put empty space in here so that between his lips you're just going to see depth. You're going to see. So. It's a good time to do it, so you mm -hmm. don't have to tuck it in between things. Okay, here's my little piece. It's going to be my upper lip. I'm going to split it down the middle. And I want all this fluff here. I want these fringes. Okay. And then I'm going to slide it up and under his nose. This is a good time to tack it. Under the nose. And then decide how wide you want your mouth. If you want him to look like the Grinch who stole Christmas, you can have a super wide, wide mouth. If you want it differently, you can tuck his little corners in and make that little poof that I told you about. And I don't put them down firmly yet because as I get the bottom lip, and the fringe for the chin, I may move this around until I find the expression I like and then I'll firm it down. I take the fringe up here and run it up over 
to kind of cover some of those creases that I don't want visible where the cheek touched the nose. Just lightly. How's yours going, Sarah? It's going well. I think I, I like that little piece under the lip to, to give a little bit. That way it's not all on the actual lip to create that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that on the, uh, the so lower lip. So I'm doing lip. it on the lower lip, too. Yeah. I'm just making a little pillow yes. that I'm going to stick down here. Right. And then I'll put the actual lip on top of it. Yeah, I think it helps a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, I, instead, I'm going to make a little roll inside my taco. Yeah, I, did, I showed did that, you do on that on the okay. lower lip. All right, good. Another way to do um, a lip instead of a taco Are you can do the roll down thing is to roll on a toothpick which gets it nice and mm -hmm. plump gives you lots of lots of dimension and then leave some fringe um, to go and blend yeah and when you finish with well, thank you mm -hmm. And I guess you already showed where you set this toothpick piece underneath, right? Inside the taco. Oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not okay. putting it in the taco. Okay. Just... So I'm going to make a very tight little wrap here, slide it off, and place it in the crease of my taco, fold it over, and I still get that definition that Sarah's going for but just in a different way. You guys can come up with anything, whatever works for you. So um, all of this just takes some stabbing and shaping and we are trying to work so that you guys can see. <laughs> Yes, so we're kind of we're not leaning, leaning in. Over. Lee has it harder because she's left-handed and her and left hand to is lean. to the inside. Yep. If for any reason you needed a real strong jaw, you could actually um, make it. by using the Zoli tool and you can even make a 90 degree angle out of that to get that really yes, strong yes. jawline. It's not necessarily a look I'm going for right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it on there. Again, this is totally gets covered up with beard. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to have the corner, corner fairly thin and then have a little pout right here. So I'm going to needle it down to kind of create a mm -hmm. pout, but we're going to need a better line right here. So your face is going to need a lot of stabbing, yep. um, probably some blending of seams and maybe some blush on the cheeks and more, you know, and more I, yeah. finessing. Yeah, yeah. And um, I often put dark in the creases for more empty space. Yeah. Where's one? Where's the lady? She, in order to make her face stand out, she has... A little bit of darker color put into the creases. I have some purple, blues, faces have all sorts of colors if you look real closely. And that kind of makes everything else stand out more. Okay, I'm going to show a round ear. Okay. Okay. Yep. And then we've got eyelids. Yep. And under eyelids. And under eyelids. I'm going to put, while you do that, I'm going to start putting some black in just so I can see where the eye is going to be. Mm -hmm. If you wrap 
the Zulu tool around the round end. And then smooth it out and slide it off. You have this nice little pillow that you can actually kind of shape with the needle. into an ear. It gets, gets a little C shape, kind of. Try to create that turned over top edge. I'm going to pull this over so I'm not confusing people while doing something different. And then the ear is placed about even with the brow or eyes and then the, um, the edge of the mouth. So if you drew a line around the face from the mouth, it will meet about the bottom of the ear. And if you go from the eyes, it should meet about at the top of the ears. Go look in the mirror, you'll see. That's right. <laughs> and then also if you do have a jawbone up to the to the edge of the jawbone. What are you working on? I'm working on putting just a few brows on. Mine's gonna, mine's gonna have more of a quizzical look, I think, I hope. So, I put some eyes in, which is a little scary, but it's all right. Now, I've got to make an ear the other way. <laughs> yeah. Which is always tricky because you usually do your comfortable way first. You do. And my ears are going to be pretty much the same, but I'm going to do it with out the Zuli tool just to show a different way. Mm -hmm. Well, the Zuli tool works great. I am, since I'm from Texas, I just do tacos all the time. <laughs> Now we're gonna have to start calling you Taco Texas. Taco Texas. <laughs> okay, so I have my finished edge here, and then I'm going to take and fold the tip over, and I'm gonna keep going like this round and round, then round. You're quiet up there, Milo. It's a lot of taco talk. I know. And I like right here, when I get to have this little fluff left at the end, I like to fold it up and over to make that little, almost earlobe kind of thing. And then I also have fringe here to attach to the head. Now, since I know this is getting beard, I'm not going to worry about this weird seam. On your chin? Yeah, I'm going to concentrate more on the top of the face. Okay. And um, should we show a nostril? Yes, I okay. think we should. Definitely. Okay. So a nostril, one way, and I think actually the, the, the easiest, best way, is to make a little taco. I'm going to put a tiny bit of wool in there. Get it pretty well felted, leaving the fringe. This one's kind of big. This is probably better. It's better size. Okay. And I'm gonna have to get some of this cheek out of the way. You've got it's tiny. These are little details. And you here. can rub it like so. Yeah. To kind of get it smoother and a little more firm on the edge. So you've got a rolled edge and a fringy edge. Yep. And then the rolled edge you shape into 
Right. The nostril. Yeah. And the fringy edge comes up and over. travels up. Right. You can also tuck it under if you want before you fold. But it's good. my head in the way. A little bit. Yeah. I'm beginning to be able to tell when it's not right. <laughs> this is a little detail that you kind of have to just fiddle with. Yeah. Because mine looks crazy right now. His nose actually looked better without it. But I'll make it right. Have faith. It helps also in this, there's a little space in that nostril, it might need some darkness. Nostrils are weird. Noses are weird. They're just hard. They're always hard to paint also. Really? Oh yeah, because it's hard to know exactly what's going on there. <laughs> it is. There's a lot of weird angles and planes, inter interconnecting planes that don't make a lot of sense hmm. to the eye. Is that true for just people or? Um, I find animals easier. I don't know if that's because I've done more animals or if it's because, I mean, I think animals' noses are actually more simple. More straightforward. Yeah, because this absolutely looks insane right now. But not, you know, not that we're not working under pressure or anything. With the camera rolling. I mean, well, he might just need another. I think this just wasn't felted firmly, and he needs another button to his nose is what's happening. Mm. You stay there. That's the cool thing about needle felting is you can just keep adding. It's not right. Stab and add. Ooh, I thought of a good t-shirt uh, the other day. What was it? Oh, it was, um... You sent one. Try needle felting. Or just try felting. You Ooh, will like love it. it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's okay if your nose comes out a little cattywampus because... Noses are that way. It's just going to give them character. My nose is so broken and crooked. My nose is going too far up, so he needs to lose the bridge of his nose a bit. It's these dang nostrils. Yep. I'm having issues with Okay, so we're going to have to work on that later because we've got a lot to do. Definitely, we do. Faces are really... Something else. Eye sleeve. Eyes. I'm not doing eyeballs. I'm doing like squinty, no need for eyeballs eyes. Okay, well these guys, these are going to get covered up. Mine's going to be pretty squinty too. And I think for the lower lid, I know, I'd like to do the lower lid first because it seems like the upper lids come down over. Okay. So let's do, do we have any more this color? Yes. That would be great. Thank you, Do you Maya. do a top one? No, not for the lower lid. I do a little tiny... Just kind of fold it. Not even that, a little tiny roll. Okay, folded it. You can do anything you want. Roll makes more sense. I do tacos for the... Um, Upper ones? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Is that right? Yes, that's perfect. I love your face. It's coming out great. Thank you. Milo, say something. <laughs> something. Well, this is our post-lunch slump. This is yeah. We decided to eat in between. Okay. So 
I have somewhat semblance of some. He's got some gargantuan nostrils. Oh my god! Oh, I think that's. Dear. I think that's because we can't lean in. I think you're right. It's gonna have to. We're gonna have to work a little bit on those. We're gonna things. have to work off camera. We need to tame the nostrils. Oh my god. Oh shit. Okay. So. I'm going to do... My eyes still end up high. Eyes. How does that happen? I don't know. You're losing your forehead. I know. But he's pretty darn cute. So, I like to put the eyeballs in just because that way I have something at least under the lids so I don't get the sucked in no eye look. And so, I'm going to make tacos again. You're We're on. We're on. Oh. Cracking the whip. Okay, we're trying to salvage a few things here. Top eyelid, I'm going to do real quick. You go ahead and do the taco thing because I've decided not to. Mine's just going to be all squinty here. Where's the um? What would you like? This. Okay. And I'm going to work on another ear. All right, I just made a little seed on the toothpick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just to further the Mr. Magoo look. <laughs> Looks good. Alright, I think we should talk about clothing. Alrighty. Or do we want to do hair first? Um, it doesn't matter. Sometimes hair will help us help you decide what the rest of your little Figure's gonna okay. Be. So this is where you get to have a lot of fun, fun. locks and yep. all kinds of good things. Yep. So I got some stuff out. I was thinking about maybe going a little crazy, going a little less traditional Santa. Mm hmm Maybe with something like that. Ooh. <laughs> what I really need to think about is the color scheme. Because I've got, so it's gonna have clothes. Let me get this wax out of the way. And, oh, I found another toothpick. Oh, good. Yes. Right when we don't need them anymore. <laughs> so I've got this blue, I've got red. Okay. I'm afraid it's gonna look like a wizard. Blue mm. would be <laughs> wizardy. Cool. Blue would be wizardy. Would be wizardy. But this can be just tiny little accents here yeah. on cuffs or collars. And I'm going all natural, so I'm going to have some browns, some creamy greeny whites, some very bright bright white, and I've got a variety of really fun. Ooh, whoa, what's whoa, that? Whoa, that's Finn. Black, black Finn. And some tiny BFL locks. And I've got some really fun little, I don't know, this is yours. What's this? That's mine? Yeah. Icelandic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Icelandic. What else do we have? Got some bits of yarn. What do you have? Do you have any like extra little deals? No, not yet. Okay, we're doing beards. So I'm, I'm going I'm... for it with the weird colored beard. All right. I don't want little white curls right well, now. Well, where's Mr. Here's my Mr. Yoda deal. He has that beard. And it works very well. Mm -hmm. Oops, I didn't get him down very well. That's a Shetland. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Also, getting the getting the hair and the beard on, or if you have a lady, just the hair, also helps you then figure out how you want to reshape and or add to the face. This guy's kind of, if I pull this up, it looks like he's got some little hair going on there. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this for the beard, and mm -hmm. then I'm going to use the white for the mustache, and the, or like a silver. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. So. Sounds good. He's. Hey, happy first day of fall. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. 
What is a what is a tree's least favorite month? Um, January, February, March, April, May, June. Hmm. I don't know. September. Uh, <laughs> September. September. So I need to find a lock that matches that for my mustache. Your mustache. Oh, what are these adorable little? Oh my gosh, lamb locks. Yeah, and then okay, so that will be his mustache, and then his hair will be white. I like to do the mustache folded in half. Yes. At the center with the pretty locks pointing out on each side. Yep. And I did the same. So I'm going to attach it like this direction and fold it this back. It's getting out of control. Over. Oh, mine's totally. <laughs> mine is totally going from what I wanted to be cute and whimsical to dark. <laughs> And <laughs> he's all sensei. He seafood. is. There you go. And that's where he's going to stay. I like to delineate the mustache a little bit. Remember when you're pulling apart your locks to start at the tip and pull down so you don't ruin the cute little curl and the structure at the top. So separate them like that. Well, we might have to have, he might have to be totally, totally dark. Where? What's the matter, Lee? Oh, I lost my, my single needle. Look at pictures so you know how beards, beards grow. <laughs> look at pictures so that they don't look like, like ours. <laughs> We're going to pull it together. Uh, we might. We will. 